in WeChat. Hi, my name is Diego. I'm Katie. I'm Talia. I'm Anthony. And, and this, this is Can, Can We Chat? Chat? Today we're bringing you someone from the Humane Society. The Humane Society takes in animals who have been surrendered, found on the streets, and they um, keep them until they find a good home for them. You have a dog, right? I do. The reason we got him is because my family decided that we wanted a dog. So we went to a shelter and when I saw him, I knew he was the one. So I asked the person, the late... Volunteer. <laughs> yeah, the volunteer who worked there if I could meet him. So she let us go into a cage and the second that we both got into that cage, he started jumping up on me and just loving me. Aww, that's sweet. You have a dog too, right? Oh yes, he was actually a stray and uh, we found Reuben on the streets before and he looked very sick so we took him into our house for the night and then dropped him off at the Humane Society. And then we decided to like adopt him. So, we... so you like found a dog, brought it to the Humane Society and then adopted it from the Humane Society? Yes. Alright. <laughs> because he was sick. Yeah. Speaking of sick. How I acquired one of my cats was I was, I had really bad hay fever, and so I was on Dayquil, and we were there, and I was falling asleep, because, anyway, I was falling asleep, and I feel like this grab in the back of my sweatshirt, and I freak out, I like unhook myself, and I run to my aunt, I'm like, Auntie Debbie, Auntie Debbie, I was attacked, I made this whole big thing of it, and it turned out to be a cat. And so um, we ended up getting that cat named Beckett because everyone in the family happens to be allergic to cats, except for me. So I'm all like sick and medicated and upset. And they're like, you want to hold this cat? I'm like, yes, I can go. And then in the car, I let him out of the box on accident. So he was running around the car. But how did the cat get inside your house? <laughs> what? <laughs> the cat wasn't in my house? It, but you didn't say- In the car. car. But you, because you said, how did you, if you were in the car, how did you run to your auntie? At, but, no, no, we adopted the cat from the Humane Society, and then while we were in the car driving to her house. It got out of the box. I, no, I let it out of the box, because <laughs> I felt bad for, again, I was very medic and very emotional. So I was like, I was like, he needs to be let free. So but I like about, opened wait. the box, and he like was running around the car. But you know, you said you was a cat, like he clawed you? Well, no, he like, I, all I feel behind me is like this. Yeah, where were you then? At the shelter. <laughs> and then through the like grate, I got grabbed by a cat. That makes sense. How old were you then? Two? It's like two years ago. Two years ago. So Everyone's like making fun of me. Okay, so. We're all dead inside. What do you think makes the um, Humane Society different from other shelters? The Humane Society, I think they take care of the dogs and stuff better. And they don't, they don't <laughs> kill the dogs. They, they don't kill the dogs when nobody wants them. Or at least what? the dogs. Shelters kill dogs now? Yeah, they There do. are kill shelters. Yeah, uh -huh. when nobody wants the dogs for years, they... Lay, Your they give, red. They give... Uh, <laughs> don't interrupt me. They give them, they give them some, some something, or you either give them a shot or drink something, and then they go to sleep. But what is it called? Forever. I don't know. What is it called? What, why do you we think have the it's something? Euthanize. Okay, so, so we're gonna have Ernie here, who's an adorable pit bull. And I guess we'll see you later. Bye, Anthony. Bye, Anthony. Bye. So today we have with us Peggy from the Humane Society North Bay. And who's this? This is Ernie, and he was adopted from the Humane Society um, about three years ago. And he is now our dog, he lives in our home. And he was, supposed to be a foster dog, which is what people do when they're not sure they want to keep a dog forever. Mm -hmm. They're just um, helping us out by, when you foster an animal, then you allow another dog to take the space of that dog. And um, sometimes people foster fail, which means they don't let the dog go to another home, they end up keeping the dog, and that's what happened to her. Oh, so now you have a forever home. That's right. Oh. How do the majority of pets come to you? So the Humane Society of the North Bay takes dogs as surrenders, which is if people can't keep their animal, 
um, their move, they move or the circumstances change that they can no longer keep the dog or cat. Um, or if we find them as a stray, sometimes they get lost mm -hmm. and we try to um, return them to their owners. And sometimes they don't have a chip or we can't find their owners. And so then we adopt them out to a new family. Why do you have to euthanize them? Can't you just spay or neuter them and then let them go? Killing them is mean. Well, we do not euthanize our animals. Um, we are lucky that we don't have to do that. We, um, but unfortunately, there just aren't enough homes and people continue to breed animals and they just aren't enough homes. So if people do spay and neuter their animals, there will be less um, and there will be more homes and not so many animals. So that's definitely one of the answers um, is to spay and neuter. So what if someone wants to adopt, but they don't have the funds for it? Wouldn't it be easier to like, just give away the animal? You already said they, they don't, well, you guys don't the, um, euthanize, but in right, right. shelters that do. We have um, different programs, like we're having a St. Pity's Day special that's gonna be coming up in March, and we'll be having a special on all the pit bulls. So, and there are different options, like the senior dogs are um, less expensive than the puppies, mm -hmm. because the puppies tend to be adopted really quickly. So. Um, there's different, there are different options for people that can't yeah. really afford to have a pet. But you know, a pet is sort of, um, you know, it's, it's a... Responsibility. Yeah, it's a responsibility and it, there's some costs involved, you know, food mm -hmm. and medical expenses and things like that. So we want everyone to be able to have a pet, but you also have to sort of be able to afford it as yeah. well. Yeah, it's a good way to test it beforehand. It's yeah. like you wouldn't get some, a dog that's more expensive than what you can deal with. Right, exactly, exactly. So why do you think there are so many homeless dogs and cats um, in the world? Um, I think that spay and neuter is definitely an issue. I mean, people aren't spaying and neutering their animals. And, um, and I think microchipping is a huge issue as well. Animals get lost and we can't find their homes. Yeah. So they end up in the shelters and there just aren't enough homes for all of the animals in the United States. Which is just so sad because they're so cute. There are a lot of good, a lot of amazing animals in the shelter. Yeah. And, you know, people don't understand that they don't have to go to a breeder. Yeah. They can find an amazing animal right here in the shelters. How old is Ernie? He's about seven. How long do you keep pets at the shelter if they aren't adopted? Well, all the animals at our shelter, they stay with us until they're adopted, unless they have um, like a behavior change or they get sick. Um, they just stay with us and we take them up to adoption events and we, people come to the shelter and look for them, meet them and we take them into the yard and we go on walks with them and so people get to actually get to know the animals. Um, so basically, I mean, we have, you know, we have an animal there that's been there for, you know, 10 months. So Aww. it's a long time to be at the shelter, but he'll stay with us until he can find a home or we can take him to a rescue that will find him. Can you spay a dog at any age? Um, I think dogs and cats have to be spayed at a certain weight, and I don't know the answer to that. But, um, the, I, you know, obviously the, before they have their first um, heat is definitely better because we don't want them to have puppies and kittens. So we talked about fees, but um, like is it expensive to get them or is it more like just comparable to the medical that they've already gotten? So our adoption fee um, for dogs, mm -hmm. adult dogs, is $200. And what that, it covers the vaccinations, the spay, neuter, if it's, an, if it's a male, um, and a spay if it's a female, and the microchip. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that barely, I mean, that does cover the fees, but if you were to go to your own vet and get a spay or neuter, yeah. I mean, it would be so more expensive. than that. Right. My cat was so freaking expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you know, I mean, yeah. it covers the fees. So, um, it's not like we're in the profit-making business. Yeah. I mean, we're just trying to, um, you know, recover our expenses. Yeah. yeah, and get them homes, yeah. So how old do you have to be to volunteer at the shelters? 15 years or older, um, and then you can come play with the cats and walk dogs, and you have to have an adult if you're under 18, okay. but your parent can come with you or yep. a guardian or something like that and come help out. You get to come volunteer and play with dogs. That yes. sounds like such a tough life. I don't know how you get by. Uh, yeah, it's kind of addicting. I've been doing it for 10 years. What if you adopt a pet and you find out that it's not working out? Sometimes that happens and pets are sometimes returned to us and then we rehome them to a home that's maybe a better fit. 
sometimes animals are maybe too active for the family and um, or it just doesn't work out. So then we take them back and then we rehome them. Sometimes it's a better situation than maybe the original situation was. And sometimes these families find a different animal or sometimes they maybe they just weren't quite ready for a pet. It's a big commitment and it's actually a lifelong commitment for that pet. Are there other options for people who can't afford pets? Volunteering is a great way to get the connection with these animals but, but not actually have the commitment to, to have the animals. Yeah. Um, you know, you can come in, you can, you know, play with the animals, walk the dogs, and get a like, fix, you know, but not have yeah. the commitment. So a lot of people that live in apartments mm -hmm. and maybe work a lot can, can do that as well, just can volunteer. About how many dogs do you think you have? Right now, adoptable, we have about 20 dogs. Um, but last year we rescued 1,500 animals. Um, they either went to rescue, they went, they were returned to their owners, or um, they were adopted into new homes. So we have a couple people who want to come ask you questions. Okay, okay so let's bring them in. Hi, my name is Davion, and I wanted to know if the animals try to attack you when you try to rescue them or something. Generally, no. Um, sometimes there are dogs that are a little bit aggressive, and that's why the sheriff's department usually handles um, called in because they're strays or um, there's a problem. Um, but dogs that are on the adoption floor, they're, they're evaluation, they're evaluated and um, they're, they're not aggressive. They're sort of like that. <laughs> so I'm Savannah and I have a question. So um, how do you know if people are adopting them to research or just to take care of them and be a friend or something? How do you know that? Well, you know, we, we do the best we can. We have adoption counselors that interview potential adopters. They ask questions. Um, and we do the best we can to, to evaluate the, the adopters and the families. Um, and, you know, we charge a fee. So most people that are going to use the animals for something that's that is unkind, they're not willing to pay, you know, $200 for a, a dog to be used for dog fighting or anything that yeah. would be unkind. So um, we do the best we can to, to interview and to use our best judgment. Um, and hopefully that all the animals end up in a really nice home for the rest of their lives. Hi. So how are like the housing units for the animals? Are they all cramped in together or are they in separate ha houses? That's a great question. So our cats, some of the cats live in a, a room where they all live together and play together and they have cat structures and they get to run around and play. And some of the cats live in um, units where they're by themselves and they have a little porthole that they go back and forth where they can eat in one little area and then they sleep in another little area. So it depends if there's a cat that's really social, they can live in the, the big living room area, and if they're not social, then they would live by themselves. Um, so do you take care of any kind of animal? We mostly take care of cats and dogs. Um, sometimes we take care of bunnies. If someone brings in a bunny or we find a bunny that needs to be taken care of, um, but mostly cats and dogs. All right, and our next person is Anthony, our host from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> He's back from Hi, my name is Anthony. My question is, how often do like you get? How often do you rescue cats? Um, well, right now it's well soon. It's going to be kitten season, so we will have a lot of cats and kittens. Um, so we we take them as sometimes they're surrendered, and sometimes um, we we find them. They're brought in. So it depends. You know, pretty soon we're going to have a lot of cats. Right now we don't have very. Now let's bring in all our questioners. We just wanted to thank you for coming from the SPCA. Yay! <laughs> and for being Especially Ernie. He's been such a good boy. And I'm sure the treats helped. Well, see you next time. <laughs>